Miranda. Yes, please. Okay. Om Ajnana Timaranda Sya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur and Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I don't, maybe, maybe Ramya is not very familiar who is Lord Nityananda. And maybe Simon also doesn't know who is Lord Nityananda. Do they know? It will be a delight to hear it from you. Okay, so uh, we say that Lord Krishna, he came in the world 5,000 years ago, of course, and he came with his brother, Lord Balaram. So, 500 years ago, Lord Krishna came again, but he came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the combined form of Radha and Krishna. They appear in one form. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna, but he's come in the mood of Radha. And Balarama, who was Krishna's older brother, he comes as Nityananda. So these two souls, Chaitanya and Nityananda, we often refer to them as Gora and Nitai. Nitai for Nityananda and Gora for short form of Goranga. Goranga is the name of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has a golden form. So he's often called Gora, 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 right? And we call him as Lord Goranga. So Lord Krishna comes as Lord Goranga or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Balaram comes as Nityananda. So Nityananda, he he appeared, he didn't appear in the, exactly the same family as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He appeared in another family, in a village, in a place called Eka Chakra. Eka Chakra is just a small village, it's about five hours in the car from Mayapur. It's in an area which is called Radha Desh. Radha Desh means where there's no Ganga flowing. But there's many great devotees came from there. So Lord Nityananda, he appeared in this village of Eka Chakra. And he was the eldest son of a, a Brahmana named Harai Oja. And his mother was called Padmavati. So the mother and father, they loved their oldest son so much, they couldn't take their eyes off him. So Nityananda understood that his mother and father were very attached to him. So it was arranged that a sannyasi came there to Eka Chakra. And the sannyasi was given shelter in the home of Nityananda. And the father the, is a brahmana, he wants to serve the sannyasi and he told the sannyasi, if I can help you in any way, if I can do anything to serve you, you please don't hesitate to ask me. Whatever you need, I'll be happy to provide for you. No, so the Brahmana, the, the sannyasi was very happy to hear this. So he said, yes, okay, before I go, I will tell you. So the, the sannyasi stayed there for a couple of nights and it was nicely taken care of. And when it came, came time to go, then he told the Brahmana, he told Nityananda's father, he said, you know, you, you want to give me something to help me? And he said, his father said, yes, anything, whatever I can give, I will help you. So he said, all right. He said, give me your eldest son. Let me take that boy Nitai with me because I'm going to visit all the holy places. It will be very good for him if he can come with me to help me when I travel through the different villages. And he will also be able to visit all the holy places. So the father was 
very dumbstruck. He never imagined the sannyasi would take his son away, but he could not refuse. And so Nitai left the father and mother when he was a young boy, about 12 years old, and he went with the sannyasi. And for many years they travelled and visited all the holy places. We said, Lord Nityananda, who did I say he was in Krishna's pastime? Ramya, are you listening? Yes. Who, who, was, who was Nityananda in Krishna Leela? Uh, uh, Krishna's brother Balaram. Right. So Balarama, you know, he didn't take part in the battle of Kurukshetra. Krishna was there at the Kurukshetra war. What was Krishna doing? Ramya. He was the chariot of uh, Arjuna. Yeah, the chariot driver for he Arjuna, was right. The war, but he was uh, riding Arjuna's chariot. Right, yeah, he was the driver. And uh, so Balarama, he wasn't there. He went to visit all the holy places. He didn't want to get involved because he had friends with both sides. So he said, I'm not going to get involved in this war. This is not good. And he went away to visit all the holy places. So Balarama had visited all the holy places. And then Nityananda, he is also going to visit all the holy places. He's very happy to go and see all the places. So he went to see all the places. And then at some point they came to Vrindavan. And he heard that Chaitanya, Lord Goranga, Chaitanya, He's began the Sankirtan. They've started to do Sankirtan in Mayapur, in the Navadweep. There's a lot of Sankirtan going on there. So when Lord Nityananda, when Nityananda, Nitai, when he heard that there was Sankirtan going on in Navadweep, in Mayapur, he came. He came from Vrindavan and he came here. So when they when the two of them met, they met they met in the in the, the home of a devotee. There was a devotee called Nandan Acharya. So Nityananda was sitting there chanting the holy name, and Lord Chaitanya came in with all the devotees, and Lord Chaitanya saw Nitai and he said Nitai, and Nityananda saw Lord Chaitanya and he said. Gora, and so they were two, he was chanting Nitai Gor, Nitai Gor, Nitai Gora. So you see, they were calling each other's names. So we worship these two lords, Gora and Nitai, because they are very merciful. They're very merciful because they're giving Krishna to everyone by chanting the holy name. They're teaching everyone the Yuga Dharma, to chant the holy name. In other Yugas, Krishna came and he killed the demons. Krishna came, he was the Sudarsan Chakra, and he would kill the demons. And Lord Rama came, he would kill the demons with his arrows and his astras. But Lord Chaitanya comes in the Kali Yuga and he's giving mercy. He's changing all the demons into devotees and teaching everybody how to chant Hare Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya is called the most merciful of all of Krishna's incarnations. And Nityananda, he is also like the older brother of Lord Chaitanya. He is like the guru. He is bringing us to Lord Chaitanya. So we get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya from Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda brings us to Lord Chaitanya and from Lord Chaitanya we can understand Radha and Krishna. Okay? Any questions? Nobody has Maharaj, a... did uh, Lord Nityananda predict about the wonderful temple that is coming up in Mayapur now? Is it his prediction? No. No, it's not his prediction. The prediction was Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Okay. 
Okay. Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, who, who is elder? Uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or Lord, Lord Nityananda? Lord Nityananda is a little older. He's an older brother. Balaram is older. But Maharaj, Hare Krishna Maharaj, but in the in in the incarnation of uh, Lord Nityananda and Chaitanya, they have different parents. Still, they are brothers. Yes, spiritually, they're brothers. Okay. Materially, the body is different, but the spirit in spiritual sense, they're brothers. And in Lord Rama's pastime, Balaram came as Lakshman. Lakshman was the younger brother. But when he was the younger brother, he had so many problems because Lord, Lord Rama wouldn't let him take care of him. Lord Rama was very strict. He wouldn't accept many things. And Lord Rama would sleep on the ground and he'd just lay on the bed of leaves. And he would just eat very simple. So Lakshman was very pained to see his brother do all the austerity. So, it, and Lord Rama was strict, he wouldn't accept anything which Lakshman would offer. So Lakshman said, next incarnation, I'm not coming as the younger brother, I will come as the older brother. So he came as Balaram. So Lord Balaram, he comes, he makes all the arrangements for Lord Krishna. Before Krishna comes in the womb, first Lord Balaram comes. And Lord Balaram makes all the arrangements for Lord Krishna to come. So similarly, Lord Nityananda, he made all the arrangements for Lord Chaitanya. He would go and convert people to Krishna consciousness and bring them to Lord Chaitanya to surrender. Right? Any other question? There are many pastimes. We could speak a long time about Lord Nityananda. He was very famous because he, he went to the most fallen people. There were two brahmanas who were drunkards, who were very fallen. They were called Jagai and Madhai. So Lord Nityananda went to them and he told them to chant Hare Krishna. And one of them took his pot of wine and he hit Lord Nityananda on the head. And blood came out from his forehead after being struck with the pot of wine. So Lord Chaitanya was very angry when he saw that this demon had hit Lord Nityananda on the head. Lord Chaitanya came and he was going to kill them. He was calling for his Sudarsan chakra. And he was going to kill Jagai and Madhai. But Jagai and Madhai surrendered to Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Nichananda, he told Lord Chaitanya, he said, No, you cannot kill them in this age because this is Kali Yuga and many demons are there. You cannot kill all the demons. We have to make them into devotees. So these two drunkards, they became devotees. They totally changed, they stopped drinking. They stopped all their sinful activities and they became good devotees by the mercy of Lord Nityananda. All right. Any questions anymore? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. I have one question. I don't know, maybe you have already said it, but I joined a little late. So how did uh, Lord Nityananda end it, uh, the, the past times in this Leela? How did Lord Nityananda what? He ended the, the past times in this Leela as, as Lord Nityananda. Yes. How did he how leave? Did he... How did he leave the world? You mean? Yes. He entered into the deity. There's a deity, there's a deity of Bankim Rai in Eka Chakra. If you, if you go to Eka Chakra, there's a deity of Bankim Rai. This deity was found by Lord Nichananda and it said that Lord Nichananda entered into the deity when he left the world. Okay. 
All right. So we we'll have uh, Bhagavad Gita now, Vaishnavi. Sorry, I was in mute. So today we are in Bhagavad Gita, third chapter, 27th verse. Fernando Prabhu, do you want to start reading this? Yeah, sure, Mataji. Sure. Prakte, prakte te kriyamamanani unahi karmani sharvasha ahankara vimudatma kartaham iti manyate Translation. The spirit so bewired by the influence of a false ego thinks himself the doer of activities sorry, that are in actually carried out by the three modes of material nature. Purport. Two persons, one in Krishna consciousness and the other in material consciousness, working on the same level may appear to be working on the same platform, but there is a wide gulf of difference in their respective positions. The person in material consciousness is, is convinced by false ego that he is the doer of everything. He does not know that the mechanism of the body is produced by material nature, which works under the supervision of the Supreme Lord. The materialist person has no knowledge that ultimately he is under the control of Krishna. The person in false ego takes all credit for doing everything independently. And that is the symptom of his this science. He does not know that this gross and subtle body is the, is the creation of material nature under the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And as such, his bodily and mental activities should be engaged in the service of Krishna, in Krishna consciousness. The ignorant man forgets that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is known as Ishikesha, or the master of the sense of the material body. For due to his long misuses of the senses in sense gratification, he is factually bewildered by the false ego, which makes him forget his eternal relationship with Krishna. So this is a very well-known verse, often quoted by Prabhupada. It's good if you like to memorize verses, this is a good one to remember, right? Prakriti kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvashaha ahankara vimudatma kartahamiti manyate. It's describing the person who is under the influence of illusion because he's thinking, he's thinking, I am the doer, I did this. We're thinking, this is mine, I did this, this is all the ahankar, right? Ahankara vimudatma, kartaham timanyati, karta, the doer, he's thinking, I am the doer. Where this is the mudha, vimuda, vimudatma. That means a big donkey, a big foolish person, very stupid person. Because they're thinking, I did this, I am the doer. What can we do? We cannot do anything. We are controlled by the material nature, by the prakriti. Ahankara huh? vimudatma kartaham iti manya. Prakriti. Prakriti, prakriti kriyamanani, gunai karmani sarvasha. We're under the influence of the modes of nature, and the modes of nature, they're controlled by the prakriti, the, the, or the modes of nature are controlling the prakriti rather, and they're controlling them according to our qualification, according, not, it's not just we're doing it, but it's going on, material nature acts under the direction of Krishna. The material nature is not independent. The material nature is controlled by Krishna. 
So under the direction of Krishna, the material nature acts, and we're thinking, I did it. We didn't do it. We're just the instrument. We're just like the machine. But it's all done by Krishna. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, according to our qualification. According to our karma, we get good and bad. So we have to understand our position. We didn't do anything. We can't do it. Sometimes we try, we think, I will do it, I will do it, and we can't do it. Why not? Because we're just simply in instruments of the material nature. But Krishna knows everybody's qualification and desire, and Krishna arranges for the material nature to act under the direction of the modes of nature. The modes of nature mean goodness, passion, and ignorance. So sometimes we act in goodness, sometimes in passion, sometimes in ignorance. Mostly we're acting in passion and ignorance. Rarely we come to goodness. And we're, and we're thinking, I'm the doer, I'm the doer. We are godas, we are the servant of our senses. We have to learn to control the mind and senses. So we should not be bewildered. We should understand the proper nature of the world and how we are just instruments and we are controlled by the material nature. We are like puppets, right? We are like puppets and there is somebody pulling the strings on the puppets. We are the puppet and we are being controlled by the material nature according to our qualification, under the direction of Krishna. He ultimately, he is the supreme controller. He decides. All right, any questions? Uh, uh, Maharaj, uh, uh, the gross body is made up of the five elements and the subtle body uh, is made up of uh, mind, intelligence, and false ego. Um, uh, can I say that this, uh, the subtle body is constructed by mind, intelligence, and fal false ego, or is the mind, intelligence, and false ego sitting somewhere in the subtle body? How do I understand this, Maharaj? The mind, intelligence, and false ego is the, is the subtle body. That is, these elements are subtle. Mind, intelligence and false ego are subtle. They're not manifest, they're not gross elements, they're subtle elements. So you cannot operate on someone and say, this is a person's mind. You cannot take out someone's intelligence. They're subtle. So how can you... I don't know. If you can't understand this, I don't know how, how to help you. And just, it's, it's so clear. And the mind, intelligence and false ego are subtle. You cannot see them, but they're there in the body. Where is the mind? It's in the heart. But you can't see it. You never find it. Anyway, you have to hear this philosophy more. And gradually you'll come to understand it. Okay, any other question? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Can we become an instrument of Maya in material world against our will? We become instruments of maya without even knowing it. We often do not realize that we are instruments of maya. Yeah. We are thinking we are the doer, we are thinking we are the controller, but we are just instruments in the service of the maya, in the service of the illusion, the illusory energy. So certainly we don't know it. People who are serving Maya, who are in the, in the illusion, they don't know, they don't think I'm in illusion, I'm in Maya. 
They don't know this philosophy, they don't know this knowledge, they cannot understand their position. But one who has studied Bhagavad Gita, one who has heard this knowledge, they can understand, they know. Other people, ordinary people, non-devotees, they cannot understand. So they don't realize they're servants of Maya. But we are. Yes? Any other question? Guru Maharaj, depend, uh, you said like, depending on the qualifications and desires, we will be put into some material mode of nature. Is it like that? Yes. So we have we have to what? So it de uh, depends upon our desire, or like that. So. Well, yes, uh, our desire and qualification. Qualification means our karma. What have we done in the past? You know, we may deserve. To, maybe we, we may desire to be the king. To be the king, we want to be a king. Or a queen, we may want to be a queen. We may become a queen bee instead of a queen of a country, may be simply a queen of a bee, of a bunch of bees in a beehive. So we have to be careful what we desire and what is our qualification. We get the resultant of everything. We desire something and we have a qualification in another way, we get the resultant. You know, it's not you get just your whatever you desire, but you get according to how qualified you are. Are we pious? Are we really pious? If you're really pious, then you get better result. If we're not really pious, we may desire something good, we will get something not so good because we have no qualification. We didn't do any pious activities. We didn't do any good deeds. Therefore, we don't get any good results. Eh? We, we get the results of our work. You do good, you get good. You do bad, you get bad. As you sow, so shall you reap. You get the results of your activities. Is it clear? Yes, Guru Maharaj. To, yeah, this is clear. I'm just uh, thinking how uh, we are being controlled by these three modes of material nat nature. Like, uh, if some I said, then there is there no chance for a person who didn't do any pious activities uh, to come to this devotional service to escape from this illusion, Guru Maharaj. Because he is thinking, I am the doer, and he is doing all bad activities, and how to escape from this, and we are controlled by material modes of nature also. So how can he get free? He needs a mercy. He needs mercy of a devotee. Somehow he has to contact a devotee. The devotee has to give some mercy to him. And he has to take advantage of that mercy. But just like devotees, we go and we distribute books and we have programs. How many people come? Even the people who come, they may not take the, the teaching seriously. And they may not take advantage of the mercy which they're being given. But still the devotee will try. He's, he wants to give mercy. He wants to help people. He wants to bring them out of their illusion and he will try. So we have to see what is Krishna's plan. You see, we, you can, we say you can bring a horse to water, but you cannot make it drink. So in the same way, we may give people mercy, but they may not take it, they may not want it, they may not accept the mercy we try to give them. But still we keep trying, we keep trying. Just like there's a story that two men were walking home one day and they saw one scorpion was drowning in the river. So this man, had one of the two men, one man, he picked out the scorpion. He thought, oh, the scorpion's drowning there, let me save it. So he picked it out of the water, but when he picked it out of the water, it bit him. 
So the bite was very painful, so he dropped the scorpion, it fell back into the water. So he picked it out again, and again the scorpion bit him, and again it fell back into the water. So his friend said, why do you keep trying to save it? It keeps biting you. So the man said, well, he does not give up trying to bite me. Why should I give up trying to save him? He said, he, he does not give up his nature. Why should I give up my nature? My nature is to try to be compassionate and to save him. His nature is to bite. He's not giving up his nature. Why should I give up my nature? So devotees like that. Devotees are very tolerant to keep trying to deliver Krishna consciousness everywhere, even though people may not appreciate. You understand? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, it's the mercy of the devotees that we are able to yeah, take up Krishna consciousness. Yes, we need mercy. There has to be somebody to give the mercy. Is it also because the devotee thinks uh, that, uh, oh, this person is coming regularly, uh, they, because of his thought, uh, then Krishna agrees to give the mercy? Is it like that, Guru Maharaj? Because of the desire of the devotees or like that? Yes, if the devotees desire, then it, may, it helps for another person to come to Krishna consciousness. If the devotees are always wish, w wishing good for others, then it helps people to come to Krishna consciousness. But Krishna does not force people to come. They have to come on their own. They have to want to come. Then they come. No, Krishna doesn't force them to come. But if he sees they have a little interest and Krishna can help them, he can make arrangements to make it easier for them. But there has to be some interest and some reciprocation from them that they really want to become Krishna conscious. Then Krishna helps to make it easier for them. Yeah, as we approach Krishna a little bit, Krishna will take many more steps to help us. He'll come nearer to us. So Krishna wants to see that we're interested. He's not going to force us. He's not going to force us to be a devotee. He gives us, gives everyone free will. All right. The man may say to the woman, you have to love me. But the woman knows, she, I can't, I don't love you. I'm not going to love you. Love cannot be forced. So our relationship with Krishna depends also on, on our own self. What is our desire? Do we want to be with Krishna? Do we want to love Krishna, to serve Krishna? In the beginning we may not, but we can develop that interest by hearing about Krishna, by hearing, by chanting, by taking the foodstuff offered to Krishna. Then they all help, it all purifies us and qualifies us to come closer to Krishna. Right? Any other, question? Any other questions? Okay, go ahead. Guru Maharaj, sorry, just uh, one more uh, doubt I have. If a person says that uh, he's, he's, not, he's doing some bad activities and he says, I'm controlled by the mode of ignorance so i can do this much only i cannot uh, go go to the mode of goodness can they say because uh, they say that uh, here they are saying they, they are controlled by three modes of the material nature they can how can we understand this guru maharaj if if a person in the mode of ignorance he can do only some uh, ignorant activities well the nature of the modes of nature is there's always a competition going on for the supremacy. So somebody may be in the mode of ignorance, but sometimes they will also show the mode of passion, sometimes they will also show the mode of goodness. They're not going to be only the mode of ignorance, so be a mixture. 
You know, sometimes you see the people who are really in the mode of ignorance, sometimes they show also a little goodness. Sometimes, you know, when we would go to distribute books, sometimes these people who are drinking beer, they will buy a book, they'll give a donation. <laughs> and they're in the mode of ignorance, drinking alcohol, and them, but them, they want to give a donation. So a little bit of goodness comes out from them. So material nature is like that. It's a mixture. There's some goodness, some passion, and mostly it's passion and ignorance. So a little bit of goodness, tiny fractions of goodness. People need to learn, they need to be taught spiritual knowledge. They have to understand what is the proper behavior. They don't realize that they are controlled by the mode of ignorance. Nobody's thinking, I'm in the mode of ignorance. They're thinking, I'm a good man, I'm having a nice time. And they're in the mode of ignorance. And if you die in the mode of ignorance, next life you will take birth in the mode of ignorance. You will become an animal. Is it all right? Yes, Guru Maharaj, it's a much clearer. This verse always, it was confusing for me. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. 3.28, Tanmay Prabhu, do you want to read this? Sure, Mataji. Thank you, Prabhu. Tattava Vittu Mahabaho Guna Karma Vibhagoya Gayo Guna Guneshu Partanta Iti Matvana Sajjate one who is in knowledge of the absolute truth, O mighty armed, does not engage himself in the sense and the sense gratification, knowing well the differences between work in devotion and work for, for fruitive results. The knower of the absolute truth is convinced of his awkward position in material association. He knows that he is part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, and that his position should be should not be in the material creation. He knows his real identity as part and parcel of the Supreme, who is eter eternal bliss and knowledge, and he realizes that somehow or other he is entrapped in the material conception of life. In his pure state of existence, he is meant to de dovetail his activities in devotional service to the Supreme Personality of God at Krishna. He therefore engages himself in the activities of Krishna consciousness and becomes naturally unattached to the activities of the material senses, which are all circumstantial and temporary. He knows that his mat material condition of life is under the supreme control of the Lord. Consequently, he is not disturbed by all kinds of material reactions, which he considers to be the mercy of the Lord. According to Srimad Bhagavatam, one who knows the absolute truth in three different features, namely Brahman, Paramatma, and Supreme Personality of Godhead, is called Tattvavit. For he knows also his own factual position in relationship with the Supreme. Jai Shri Prabhupada. All right, so Krishna is explaining the difference between work in devotion and work for fruit of results. Work for fruit of results, that is called the karmi. Karmi, he wants to enjoy the work. He's thinking, what do I get? What's my result? What's the profit? Right? What's, what's in it for me? Where the, the karmi is thinking to enjoy. And the other person is working in devotion. Work in devotion means he's working for Krishna. So his work, his, his work is devotion, it's, we would say seva, right? Bhakti is doing seva, service for the Supreme Lord. So one has to understand his relationship with Krishna. 
Krishna is the absolute truth. He is the supreme and we are his servant. So we are part of Krishna and tiny parts and we have a duty to give service to the Supreme Lord. But we are in the material creation, in this material world. We've forgotten our identity and we're thinking we're the material body. We're for, we have forgotten that we're a spirit soul and the soul's nature is full of bliss and knowledge, but instead we are thinking we are a material body. And we are thinking, because we have a material body, we have senses, I have to enjoy my senses. And the senses enjoy by the sense objects, right? Five senses, the tongue, the eyes, the hand, the nose, the skin. And the five sense objects means the sense of seeing, the sense of smelling, the sense of tasting, the tense, sense of touching, and the sense of hearing. Those are the sense objects. So we enjoy the, the different senses, enjoy these different things. So we're meant to connect our activities and service to Krishna. And we do that by devotional service or seva. So Krishna consciousness is all about doing service for Krishna. And we begin doing devotional service by hearing. First comes hearing and then comes chanting. So hearing is very, very important. We have to hear regularly more and for a long time. And we have to understand what we're hearing. We have to hear and then we repeat what we've heard. We repeat what we've heard. And this way then we can start to remember Krishna. So the material life, we have to understand material life is under the control of Krishna. And this, we should become detached. We shouldn't be attached. We should understand everything is the arrangement of Krishna, it's the mercy of Krishna. So, one who knows Krishna, he knows also the different features of Krishna. Just like there is Paramatma, means the Lord in the heart, and there is also Brahman, the energy, the spiritual energy. So these are all different features of Krishna. Just like you have the sun god, and you have the sun planet, and you have the sunlight. The sunlight is also part of the sun, and the sun planet is also part of the sun. The sun god, he's the controller, he's the supreme. So Krishna is the supreme and he has also Paramatma, he has also uh, Brahman. Alright? So one who knows the absolute truth, the absolute truth means Krishna, and Krishna has different features, we said, Brahman, Paramatma. Hmm? So one who knows Krishna, then he will do service for Krishna. He knows the difference. He knows what is work in devotion and what is work for fruit of result. Work for fruit of result brings karma. It's bondage. It keeps us in material life. But work in devotion gets us liberation gets us free. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes, it's completely clear. Any questions? No questions. So will we chant Hare Krishna now? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda 
Shri Advaita Gadadha, Shri Vasade Gaur Bhakta Vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.